Lipids have a number of important roles in the body, and that's what we're going to cover in this section. As we talked about in chapter five, the main role of carbohydrates is also energy provision. But when it comes to carbohydrates, they're more of like our short term ready to go energy. Whereas I like to think of lipids as our long term energy source. We have endless amount of energy that we can store on our body in the form of lipid that is going to be housed within our, our, our fat cells. So each gram of lipid provides about nine kilocalories of energy and under normal circumstances uh, either lipids that are found in our blood or lipids that are broken down from our fat cells these can enter the blood and then go to the cell and as we learned before they can enter the process of cellular respiration so remember that the glycerol backbone of of a triglyceride can be used to make glucose which can then get metabolized into pyruvate and down into acetyl coa but the majority of our triglyceride or our fatty acids, these are broken down two carbons at a time to form again acetyl CoA, which again can then enter the citric acid cycle and then go through the electron transport chain to generate ATP. But as we learned about in chapter three and in chapter five, the only way that lipids get fully metabolized this way through the electron transport chain and the citric acid cycle is if there's enough carbohydrate available in the blood, okay? If there is insufficient carbohydrate intake, that acetyl-CoA from lipids is going to be used to generate ketones, which can be used for energy. The main way we store energy on the body is in the form of lipids, and our lipids are stored within these fat cells or adipocytes, which are collectively known as our fat tissue, or more appropriately known as our adipose tissue, okay? So remember, our, from our small intestine, it's our chylomicrons that are going to be our lipid delivery system. And one of the tissues that our chylomicrons can deliver lipids to is our adipose tissue. Our liver, remember, also makes another lipid transport or another lipoprotein called VLDL. And VLDL is the main way we transport lipids from the liver to different tissues like our fat cells. Okay, so again, when energy intake, the total amount of energy we consume is higher than the amount of energy we burn, this is what is favored. Fat storage is favored. Conversely, when we consume energy at a deficit to our needs, at a deficit to our needs, we need to get that extra energy from somewhere. Luckily, we have a lot of energy stored in our fat cells, in our adipose tissue. And those lipids that are stored in our adipose tissue, they can be broken down and fatty acids and glycerol can enter the bloodstream, then go to our tissues. So cellular respiration can happen and we can take those lipids and use them to generate energy to fuel our body's needs. Okay. Another really important role of lipids in the body is in their ability to form membranes. In particular, lipids called phospholipids, right, that have that phosphate head and fatty acid tail. These phospholipids they form something called the phospholipid bilayer. And these two layers, these two layers here, here's one phospholipid, there's another one, those two layers there, that's the bilayer, that's, that double layer is actually the whole cell membrane. So the whole cell membrane is going to kind of go like this. So this would be the cytoplasm, the watery environment of the cell. And this phospholipid bilayer, it's so genius because I can embed things in there like proteins, which can act as transporters, plus this phospholipid bilayer doesn't let a lot of things in and out, okay? Only really things that don't like water can move in and out, nonpolar substances. But in general, it locks things in the cell and outside of the cell. And that's why I need protein transporters often to be able to move things in and out of the cell. Those are our phospholipids. Like we mentioned, lipids are also important for being able to transport and store our fat-soluble vitamins. Well, that needs a dash there. So our fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, they need lipids for absorption, for transport, and storage. If you do not get enough lipids in your diet, 
you are also probably going to be inadequate in the fat soluble vitamins because without lipids, I can't absorb and transport and store lipid soluble vitamins. Also, in addition, certain lipids can be used to synthesize other key molecules, which, are not without, which potentially have a number of different roles in the body. So for instance, sterols, in particular cholesterol, can be used to make a whole slew of important things, like our steroid hormones, like bile salts, like vitamin D, like the hormones estrogen and testosterone. These are all derived from cholesterol, and that's why cholesterol is important, though our body can make it, so it doesn't need to come in from the diet. Also, essential fatty acids, so remember, these are with the those with the double bonds at position three or position six, these can be used to form endocannabinoids, okay? And if you're seeing the word cannabis in there, you're right. These are kind of our natural cannabinoids that we have in our body that have a number of physiological roles, including on things like appetite and reward, but a number of roles beyond that as well. And essential fatty acids can also be used to form eicosanoids. And eicosanoids are signaling molecules. They're like hormone-like molecules, which again have a number of important physiological roles. For instance, in like regulating the diameter of blood vessels. Okay. So in addition to all the specific lipid roles, we can also synthesize other molecules from lipids that have important roles in the body. So Take home message, lipids are important from the diet and we absolutely need to take them in to be able to do all these important things our body needs to do.